it being after four o'clock, we don't have a forum yet. Uh, Wayne will be here. Uh, he'll be a little bit late. He might might be a bit late. And that's and more than a little or less than a little? Well, I actually told him, he, he said he could try to cut out early to get here on time. And I said, um, I would let him know if a lot of people, at, at that moment, I, I didn't have a problem. I had everybody else, you know, most other people were going to show up. But uh, I had a bunch of late notices today. Well, Chris, I'll say, if you don't, you know, while we're waiting, I'll have something I'd like to say. Sure, why don't we do that? Why don't we start and at least do public comments? Uh, actually, can I have someone to say you'll be a scribe? Sure, I'll go two for two. Okay, David. You did a good job last time. Okay. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, nice. I say we have a permanent position. We don't have a we don't have a form, otherwise we voted as a permanent position for you, Dave. <laughs> Saved by the bell or something. <laughs> That's what I said. Okay, great. Right. Sharon, go ahead. So I'm Sharon Moulton. I'm on ULPN from Leagues Ward 7. And um, I, what I wanted to say is that Marty Nathan and I are both involved in climate action now. And um, we're probably going to have some. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, something that we're gonna need 50 signatures for for the convention. So if anybody who's a convention delegate, look for a climate action now table because we'll need 50 signatures because it, it, and it's in support of carbon pricing in particular in support of the fact that there are already two existing bills. And so something should be done so that the legislation, legislative process keeps going. So that's what I wanted to tell you. And Sharon, can you elaborate by convention? The Democratic, Democratic Convention Democratic. a week from Saturday. I, I assume that's what you meant. But yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to have a recommendation or a something. There's two different kind of things. One thing you need 500 signatures. That's not the kind of thing. And there's something that you need 50 signatures, and you can turn it in at noon on that day. <laughs> and seeing, seeing there's some controversy over the exact wording, and it's interesting, it isn't the wording that you had problems with at the end, it's the wording at the very beginning. <laughs> so, so we haven't got it, got it, it absolutely settled what the wording is going to be. but. Marty and I both really want to do something, so we're going to make somebody mad. Exactly who hasn't determined yet, but okay. And, and, and these for 50 signatures, just to reiterate, need to come from convention. Yes, from delegates. Delegates. From delegates. delegates right? okay. So, any of you that are delegates, I'm not. you're not. No, I'm not so blessed as a Democratic delegate. They barely acknowledge me as a. Well, you've got to so. go to your caucus. I mean, Jesse got himself elected at I, my I caucus. Know, you and I work in different ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Um, you want to, or where you want to announce the um, the climate change uh, conversation, the, the forum? Uh, Monday, September 20th, and Wednesday, September 30th. The city is doing a workshop at the Senior Center at 7 p.m. on <coughs> Monday the 28th, and 7 p.m. at the Senior Center. Um, and then 2 p.m. on September 28th, the stakeholders, uh, focus groups, urban design, green infrastructure, energy, and climate, and environmental planning. And that's to ensure diverse representation for the very limited space groups we're looking for a mix of perspectives and groups interested in discussing um, our future climate change adjustments and policy and government in Northampton. Okay. Well, actually, before we get too far in here, I guess we should say that we are being recorded. Right. Uh, so this uh, meeting is is, uh, is being recorded. Um, 
Uh, so without a forum, we can follow up on a few other things. Uh, this is probably not, I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give a status report even though it's probably not anything people haven't heard already. But um, uh, uh, the, the city government has chosen Amoresco to go forward with a project at the peak on, on, the, on the landfill. I think everybody here knew that. It was in the newspaper. Is that Scott's company? Nope. No. No, he's Noresco. Um, so that's a status report. That's basically, that's a status report there. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, no, this is, uh, the, the comments of the response, at least on social media, relevant to that article, everyone's really high on it. And I'm glad that I have each it. article, it, it emphasized the fact that this is all good up until a point, and until the net metering cap is adjusted. This is a project that is aspirational as opposed to a possible at this point that makes sense. Right. Um, so, but by and large, the community is very excited at the prospect. Oh, wonderful. So, so yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't seen any of that. So. Hey, even on Mass Live? Perhaps? Well, no, I don't, because I don't. You know, there's not enough prescription medicine to compensate for the feelings I get after I read those, so I don't, <laughs> I don't read those. But the, um, there will be a, a forum, I don't know the date, but uh, up on Ryan Road. 29. The 29th? Right. Yep. Uh, 7 o'clock. Council of Barge is hosting. She's already flyered her whole community um, uh, to discuss the prospects and possibility and aspiration of having um, a fully developed and functioning solar array up in the landfill. Last night at the Western Mass Group Consortium meeting in Clarion, someone announced that uh, legislation has passed extending that metering. They didn't know which one, but they said it just today. Yeah. Or did well, get out of committee? Did it pass? She, someone asked her, what do you want to it? Yeah, and then what do they mean by it passed? Because, I mean, is it a a Senate bill passed a while ago, but yeah. just, just before the, the vacation. She said it was a uh, recent. Uh, okay, right. Yesterday, yeah. right. So, okay. Consequential. Yeah. Right. So we know more. Is it? Yeah. Is it passed in both houses or right. one or the other? Right. So. It was Karen Rivera. Okay. Huh. Okay. It's, well, Karen was tracking it. She's been. Okay. She was involved with. Um, Mother's uh, out front. Your mother's out front, that's why, and, and they were involved with the press release and stuff, so yes. she's politically been tracking it, so maybe something's good. I'll do a new search. Okay. That yeah, would be nice news. Um, while we're waiting on that, oh, um, okay, the last item I'm going to actually go ahead and touch on, even though I forgot to bring it back. Um, uh, we did get a, a, le a letter back from the governor's office that so I thought I'd let everybody know, and it didn't really say what it was in reference to. So I'm assuming it was in reference to the letter that we sent that at least got copied to the governor's office, and it basically said thank you for the letter. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would just go lay that back. <laughs> That's very <laughs> encouraging. Do you think this is on the net main recapping first? I not you know I'm not, yes I think so yes that's what we were, were writing on yeah. Yeah. Mm. And before we find <laughs> okay, so I meant to bring that in. It was so rather ambiguous. <laughs> it didn't say much, so that's 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 done. Um, uh, Aiden, I don't think we need a decision on it. So why don't you go ahead and talk about the Nantuck Community School? We're going to continue to hope we have a quorum. Sure. Well, a few uh, board members who were hoping to be here today are getting ready for the school committee meeting tonight. Um, so my, I'm part of the community. I have a daughter there, and a baby pending that hopefully will go there as well. It's a great community school on Riverside Drive. So um, kind of surprisingly, or, or not too long ago, the mayor announced he wanted to sell the biker building. And um, the lease ends June of 2016, so the school is kind of scrambling and realistically can't find a, you know, doesn't think they can find a location um, in that time and you know, get a, a new location up to code the requirements for school. Um, and why I felt like this is rel relevant to, to NESC is that 
uh, local community-based schools are so important uh, for a sustainable community. And in fact, it's referenced in the sustainable master plan uh, a number of times, just the importance and the presence of local schools for walkable local communities. Um, I bike my daughter there every day to and from school, um, see parents walking their kids. A lot of parents live in Bay State. So for this school to have to move to East Hampton or, or somewhere even further away from town would be uh, difficult for the community that's there now. Um, so here are some notes uh, from Not Enough that has some data about how many families are there, how many people work there, and then a few points relative to uh, nest and sustainable communities. So um, you know, I, I think in the next couple of days or next couple of weeks, the school community is going to decide if there's um, input from the city, I think the mayor's on the um, school committee tonight, and there's going to be a big conversation there, apparently, um, that maybe the school could potentially purchase the building, um, which I think, uh, from, a, from a Ness perspective, would be great, just from what is the sustainable community in Canada? Is that part of the uh, you know, good solution? Um, so you know, in terms of decision, I'm not looking for anything, you know, they were considering having a, a letter that Ness can support officially, but, it's not ready for that, but just um, wondering, I mean, I know you guys know a lot more about this. There are some relative things to the building around energy, and it was part of the um, ESCO, right? There are some updates made. Chris mm -hmm. said the energy use data that you know, got better since that. Um, there are clear improvements that could happen to the building, um, and I offered you know, to volunteer my time to, to help with those things or identify what cost-effective improvements you know, um, in the context of the city paying the energy costs and then they pass that on to the school. So that can lower the operating costs of the building. Um, and brought up some of the national grid and the uh, lighting uh, pilot that would be great for that. There's tons of you know, low hanging fruit lighting upgrades. They need a, a management plan. You know, I was in there yesterday with AC running, windows open, there's that type of stuff going on. So I was, I've you know, created a job. It's a co op school, so all the parents have jobs. So I created one of the system. For the school, looking at you know local food for snacks for the kids, to no white only signs in the parking lot, to looking at the building. And are you going to volunteer for that volunteer position? I've already yeah I've yes. created it and I am it yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. But in that, but now with the city looking to sell a building, you know in terms of engaging the city on making cost-effective upgrades, it doesn't make sense until there's some decision to either uh, hold the building or. I don't know how energy costs would play into a, a deal with selling to the school, but certainly the school needs to be aware of uh, the cost of operating it, which they have no idea right now. It's basically just passed on from the city. Okay. Um, and actually, it's, I, and I met with the two board members, three board members, the um, school owns it, so that's why it's under the school's aegis right now, and they're discussing it, and the, what they do is they surplus in order to establish a lease a six and a half year lease for Nonatuck. And uh, from what I understand, they're asking for a three year extension on that um, to allow them to do long term planning. It, the part of the problem was is that the board, as is, is Aiden pointed out, it's a parent co op and as such a really high turnover on the board because of two year programs. You have, and so there was no legacy understanding that there was a clock ticking on the, on the, uh, tendency. So, um, if the school, depending on the school board's vote tonight, if they vote to surplus but not to renew the lease, then it reverts to the city and the city, then it becomes city property, and then that's up to the city council. The RFP expands exponentially, probably, in, uh, on, on how that's decided. So, it becomes the bars get higher and higher as it moves further in the process if it should happen. So as it stands now, from what I'm saying, they got four more years on that roof maybe and they need to... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and there's, there's some major, major expenses looming for them. And of course, they're not, they don't have an endowment as a family cooperative. They're, they're, they're basically covering tuition and, and staff costs and, and supplies. Okay. So, yeah, they, but the, they are clearly invested in this and they want to move forward, so we'll see. It all really depends on what happens with that vote tonight. If the school committee decides to extend it, then ultimately I would imagine that would be the case unless the mayor wants to bring it before the council once it gets surplused 
um, then it gets a little trickier. The, the mayor may have plans for it too, so we'll see. I don't know. So we'll find out. But yeah, so I think this is a worthy, and particularly emphasizing the community resource. Uh, yeah. The uh, community gathering space it is essentially the community center of Bay State, and there are uh, the spaces that are used by Bay State community members, yeah. short of the, the, the what's the veterans place on, on Riverside. It's one of the, it's a veterans office. service club. It, well, there's the office, but there's a veterans service club right once you pass a high school, it's on the right. Where karaoke and, and cheap on, on tax monitored beer is sold. Uh, so, but there's uh, ultimately no family gathering place beyond that school. So. The, and, the, and considering the alternatives is probably some kind of residential development there. Residential development or city, but you know, let's, Remember, the city's scrambling to try and find space for the rec department, mm -hmm. um, and probably other possible other agencies. And private developer may do that. But people like Bobby Goodgen, who bought the Florence Grammar School, maintained and kept the services and the programs that were there. So that that could actually that would be might be another thing that Nanatuck could pursue as a private developer might be interested in being the landlord. I don't know. But in, I mean, clearly, as you said, they're scrambling. They've got less than the gestation period of a, of a giraffe to try and figure out what they're going to do here. And so if I had to guess our betting, I guess the school committee is likely to give them the extension they're requesting. So we'll see. Okay. It's fluid. Dave, do you have something you want to add to this? No, no. OK. No. Um, uh, Aiden, just uh, congratulations for taking on the position of sustainability volunteer. Uh, for the school um, uh, and because it is a town school owned building uh, that means we might coordinate some actions and one one thing that comes to my mind um, is the state has done this a couple times now where they all of a sudden they said we've got a whole bunch of free light bulbs high efficiency light bulbs and I think they're talking about interior, interior LEDs at the moment and we've taken a look at that each time and, and determined that we couldn't quite take advantage of it because it would cost more than we had, you know, how fast we could do it. We, we didn't have the install cost. We could have gotten the product for it for free, but we didn't have staff or money to pay someone to actually swap out all the lights. Um, with that said, that is still a current offer. And if Nanatuck has, can talk to the town or the city about you guys somehow doing volunteering to do the, the vaults, but I have no idea whether you would need an elect, uh, you know, electric, electrician or what. I'm not sure what it would entail. Um, I'd be happy to talk with you about that. Maybe we could direct. You know, while it's still a city building, I don't think this is an offer that's going to private entities, but while it's still a city building, maybe we can direct that to, to the school. It would certainly be easy for us to do if someone could do the install. Thing, so yeah, and considering the city's now paying energy costs, costs. Uh, right. You know, because they're, yep. they're, as I understand it, a uh, lease includes heating, cooling, and electric. Uh, well, you could not have to pay as heating, cooling, and electric, right? No, I thought it's bundled into there. Oh, is it? It is, but the, the district covers a lot of those costs right now, the okay. school district. Okay, great. Um, either way, the bulbs are free, and uh, it's it's uh, basically a shortage of manpower that yeah. we've decided. And I, have, I have, we hadn't gone down to the size of the Nanotech school to think about that in the past. Mm -hmm. I've looked at some of the other schools the city has. Yeah, I'd be happy to make a list and yeah, coordinate so, some volunteers. Right. So you should get a hold of me and okay. uh, try to put that. Great. See if something can come out of that. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, anything else on this at the moment? Um, Okay, well, see, a stretch code on public comment on, to BBRS. I know um, Louis last minute could not make it here. And um, so I, I, I put out there between Aiden and Louis, do you want to talk about that at all? So do you want to start that conversation? We can't really go far with it, but. Yeah, yeah, we talked about last meeting, uh, writing a letter to the DOER and BBRS about the conundrum, what I call the uh, Brown community issue where stretch code is less stringent than the base code. 
right now in Massachusetts. So it's kind of a daily part of my work is explaining to builders, well, if you weren't in a stretch boat town, your house would have to be twice as tight. But since you're in a stretch boat town, you know, you don't need to do so much air. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's a problem and we're concerned with well, what's going to happen with the next more stringent base code if there's no stretch code announced you know, that may come even more behind. Um, in the meantime, Louis uh, yesterday sent the, the draft of the next code, which includes a provision for updating the stretch code. And um, I looked at it briefly, and basically had, they, they simplified it, which is great. It's down from 12 pages to half a page, um, basically saying, uh, you know, use the HERS, uh, the performance path uh, of the base code. Um, you need to hit HERS 55 or lower for new construction, residential construction. Um, which is right now the current limit, limits are 65 or 70 or lower. So it's a pretty big jump. Um, however, in Northampton, I think uh, Louis mentioned our average is around 50 right now. And honestly, it's, it's not that difficult to get below 55. They've also added a solar offset. So if you have PV, you can actually get 60. So you, you have more leeway with the energy efficiency of the thermal boundary of the energy efficient systems if you have renewables. Um, and it's, you know, my thing is it's, it's not a huge impact, so you're not gonna have people intentionally investing in solar so they can build a crappier building. And that's gonna resolve in that. Um, what I'm not aware of, and that Louis can speak to, is how it's changed around renovations and additions. Um, but in general, you know, because they included provisions for it, Increasing the stretch code above the base code, um, I think things are going in the right direction. It's like way behind already, and there's no date on when it's going to be finalized. Could be January to say the goal, or at least really it's probably July of 2016. There's so still, you know, a, a long time. Um, but it's going in the right direction, which is simpler, um, uh, you know, more stringent, uh, better. Uh, Increasing the bar every code edition. So um, I think things are in the right, going the right direction. And as we hear more about the draft and the, the revisions that um, happen, you know, movies, I think, keep track of it and we can um, weigh in on that. Okay, so who, who put this out? Is this, did this come out from the BBRS? Yep. Okay. BBRS, yeah. So would it be helpful for the commission to? Uh, write a letter of support uh, for this, saying they're going in the right direction, keep going, or I don't know. Maybe if they're asking for public comments, I, I, don't, I don't think there's okay. a, an ask for that yet. I think this was just, oh, six, oh, it was a draft, it was in June. So um, I haven't seen any public comment um, request yet, or I don't know, maybe. And this is a 63 page revision. Massachusetts revision for the base code. There's tons of stuff in here um, that I'm sure is going to get tweaked. And, uh, yeah, we might want to check and see if, if, as the building commissioner, if Louis is actually going to go testify if there's public hearings on this, um, then he could submit a letter uh, from the NASC when he mm -hmm. testifies yeah. you know, as right. a member of the commission. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So basically, we, yeah. I, I agree, we should ask, touch base with Louie, see what he thinks. Um, all right, well that actually almost kind of cuts short the conversation, doesn't it? <laughs> right, in a good way. <laughs> I, I have to add though, there is some concern that's came up with the zoning, that if, for instance, a developer of a systems um, under Chapter 40B wanted to uh, build a project of sorts. They could end run the stringent requirements by offset doing renewables, giving them a buy on more um, expensive, more durable, um, built-in energy uh, um, conservation systems. Um, so we were concerned about that when we were drafting the zoning for units greater than seven. In fact, actually, I believe the language we have addresses that specifically, but uh, it'd be interesting to see the code breaks that way, how that would affect statewide, what the impact would be. 
Well, then, of course, it runs up against the net metering cap as well. I was just reading the Charlie well, paper was saying that we're we're fine, we're fine without a net metering cap. It's like having scoops of ice cream. You either have two scoops or one scoop. It's still a good snack. And that's what he's sort of comparing. <laughs> that's his analogy. So, so but anyway, I mean, you can see where that trend is going. So the the zoning range around seven units or greater omit solar. Right? right. It's before solar. Right. Exactly. That's solar. You get extra. It, using Charlie Baker's analogy, you get more scoops after that. But the fact is, is it's not the baseline. So that, that yeah. we 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 require in excess of the the higher standards already that we have here, which now don't don't jive with the state code. But so and this again is also, as I said, in the atmosphere of the governor's uh, desire to have all state. Regulations conform with federal that the that the that developers and corporations and others that find too onerous in Massachusetts. Um, he's he's prepared to uh, wipe out every legislative act that makes us more aggressive uh, than national standards, and he wants to use national standards as the baseline. So all that looming, he does come down to the local initiative. Okay, so you might be a little leery of that. That solar opt uh, opt out, yeah. Just just a little, and I think locally we've got it covered. Um, I think statewide there's a possibility for it. You know, everyone's looking. I mean, it's understandable. Anyone who's doing a development is going to try to find the cheapest uh, way to yeah. build their Three buildings, dollars, their initial building, and then they want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. They develop it, sell it, flip it, whatever. And there's a lot of enabling legislation for uh, Chapter 40B affordable housing system. So there's a, they got a lot of buys of that. So we want to make sure that it's quality construction. It's not built on the cheap, just so somebody can turn over a quick buck and be protected by the state and federal government. We'll note that in minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Dwight got cranky and wonky. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it might influence what we, if we, if Louis says, you know, right. believe that we should make a comment, that might very well be something we want to put in there. Um, all right, well, I hate to say it, but at this point, we are now down to either needing, um, we, we need a quorum to go any farther. Uh, should I see if Wayne is available? Is yeah, why don't you, you want to text him and see if it's... I, I don't have a... Can you text? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm not a texter. I have yet to text a single message. <laughs> this could be your first one today. This too shall pass. No, it won't. <laughs> yeah. I still don't own a personal cell phone. <laughs> text from your iPad. Hmm? Yeah, I probably could. I had to figure out how. Minimize the impact of net metering cap. Says solar projects can be profitable anyway. When did that come out? Because that be uh, this came out September eighth. Okay, I've, I've I've heard that argument from them already. Yeah, right. Um, one hundred seventy one communities hit the cap. Right. Well, I mean, as far as North Hampton goes, uh, I'll tell you, if, it, if the cap doesn't go through, the a financial picture of that PV array is going to change drastically. Um, no, I think it's a pretty disingenuous reaction. To, yeah. yeah. Right. So you're saying developers shouldn't shy away from solar projects out of fear that they won't be profitable? It'll only really take them 50 years to pay it off. I said there'll still be benefits within the cap, uh, just smaller ones. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. You, 
you get the fact that if you can have a double scoop of ice cream instead of a single scoop, you'd want the double one. Baker said, and he called on officials to not let the cap serve as a deterrent to new solar projects. Noted in some cases, the difference between the wholesale and retail and reimbursement rates can mean a developer breaks even in five years rather than four. That's 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 such a soft sell. That's just that's just yeah. That's not accurate. Anything else that we should go over? I mean, the two things that we do have on here, um, David, you have one uh, uh, hoping to use some of the energy committee uh, the, the revolve your fund. Right. I, I can't get an approval on that. Right. Is it a form, so. Is it needed before our next meeting, or? Uh, it is. Yeah. Because uh, the class is October 19th through the 21st. We can do a special meeting. So, but you know, the mayor's already approved it. Right. So October 19th through 21st, but you, or 19th you through the 20, whatever five days is, 19 through 24. Okay, but you have, and you have to lock in before that. I mean, the next the October meeting for Energy Commission will be on the 8th. Wayne says he can come down. Okay. So he's on his way. All right. Okay. Very good. That is so much better. Didn't want to have to have the second <laughs> emergency <laughs> meeting. Right. right. Yeah, and as far as this, I mean, um, there's an enormous amount that the city is working on right now. Um, uh, and besides kind of status reports, though, um, I've noticed that the Energy Commission meetings, uh, They've been, there's been key things. That, I mean, is it, is it okay just to have these meetings where the agendas are a little bit shorter and a couple of key things? But because uh, I don't want to ever be in a position where we're wasting people's time or <coughs> I've never felt that I've uh, okay wasted my time in any of these meetings. I think that okay they've all had you know depending on our areas of expertise the. For the counselors, it's a, it's a really good education. So if nothing else, at least you're serving the, okay. the people who actually have the voting authority to make them a little smarter. I know that's an uphill battle, but it, it, every little bit helps. So, so yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I make comes. sure. I because I know a lot of particularly department heads have lots of meetings like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I should point out though. The difference between we get paid. Then, so you guys get paid. Get paid. <laughs> you guys get paid. That is true. <laughs> I just get smarter. That's it. <laughs> so that's it's it's part of their okay. part of you guys your crappy job description. <laughs> Speaking of crappy job descriptions, yes, I, I told him yes. we were talking to him. We, Chris gave me a pass. I did check with oh, him. Believe oh, he did. He, he did. Yeah. And then he yeah. got a bunch yeah. of no-shows. Yeah. 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 I came in, I came in late. I made the end of my conference call. Just for you guys. Oh, thank you. And then David left. <laughs> it's, it's like a horror movie. Somebody goes down in the basement and they don't come up. And the next person goes down and go get them and they don't come back. And then a ghost and then comes back. Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a knife. Um... Well, in that case, until David's here, even though we can't vote on it. Here we go. Hey, all right. Hey. So let's take it from the top then. Um, uh, I, I accept a motion to a, a review and approve the minutes from August 13th and August 20th. So moved. Okay. We have a second. And okay. Um, any comment on any of the minutes? August 13th and August, or August 20th. I was not here on the 13th. So if you could separate those? You could still accept minutes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, we'll do it separately then. Why don't we do it in two? Just okay. Okay, so August 13th. Um, okay, uh, I'll amend the motion to say, uh, I'll amend the motion to say that uh, approval minutes of, of, of uh, August 13th. August 13th, right. right. Yeah. And, uh, and it's still, it's still accept the second. Okay. So a second yeah. <laughs> Um, any comments on August 13th minutes? All in favor? Okay, perfect. August 20th, same thing. I move that we accept the minutes from August 20th. Hey, you want to 
Go for it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> again, <laughs> big burden. <laughs> yeah. right. Any comments on August 20th? Minute? I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a comment. That was the um, that was a special meeting. Oh yeah, special meeting. Yeah, yeah. quick. Quick, that's right, quick yeah. special meeting. Uh, David did the minutes. Um, no other comments? All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Great. And then, David, I'm going to let you uh, go ahead with the energy management system sure. training. Sure. Just so, basically, um, Chris and I had a discussion. Uh, Pat McCarthy, who's the still relatively new facilities project coordinator for Central Services, he is overseeing the energy management systems for the 20-something facilities and, and uh, buildings that we manage. And um, Johnson Controls is running a sort of a tutorial five-day class uh, for skill upgrades. So I wanted to send Pat to that. And Chris and I had a discussion about using the revolving fund to pay for it to be about $2,700. Uh, there's specific language in the revolving fund uh, that talks about uh, use for efforts to improve energy efficiency and conservation. Um, so I sent a memo to the mayor, the mayor approved it, and uh, this is a request for the NASC to also approve it uh, since the mayor votes first and uh, he, like I said, he did approve it. So it would be five days, uh, covers tuition, uh, and other cost, and it would be held in uh, Cranston, Rhode Island. What was the amount again, David? 2700 I move that we approve the request for $2,700 <coughs> to provide education at the Johnson's Control uh, Program okay. for Central Services. Can you come and tell us what you learned? You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, primer, of course. Second. Okay, wait a second. Any other comment? All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Um, okay, unless someone else has something else to bring up, which I kind of doubt because we had some dead period there. <laughs> 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 um, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Wow. There you go.